gonna need you This life is more than just a read through Hello Happy St. Patrick's Day Right? Merry Easter And Rosemary's Keister Jeez Louise, there's a girl over there Wearing a dress with some kind of trousers underneath.
each different phase that we're in is just a, you know, a time capsule of us at that time in our lives. And especially with a band like us, because it's such a non-contrived thing. It's just what we're feeling at that moment, and, and that's it. So we, I think that the, our music being relevant has to do with the, us being honest to where we're at and just not being contrived. Now hopefully, as a, as a musician and as a guy who's you know, a, a fourth of a band, you know, I can, along with my fellow musicians, keep evolving and trying new stuff. And you know, people mention that they like the singing better on this record than the last record. That's fine. I, I liked all of the different weird stages I've gone through as a vocalist um, to get where I am today. You know, I appreciate you know, all levels of ability and phrasing and you know, whatever it takes to, to do my job in this band as a singer and a, and a, you know, a, a one-fourth songwriter. It's, I just, they grow, I, I try to keep up. You know, they play music, it inspires me to, to sing in a certain way. You know, a lot of it's just me bouncing energy off of this great wall of sound that develops at rehearsal. Every time I go in there, something, you know, beautiful is flying around the room and I just try to, you know, dive in that stream and, you know, make some noise that sounds right. When I was a young man, one time, I, I, I went to go see a, a band called the Circle Jerks play mm -hmm. at this little warehouse, yep. and they started playing, and it was so violent when they started playing, not that people were hurting each other or anything, but the way they attacked their instruments, that I was afraid, and it was a beautiful feeling. That's a great fear.
Danny California happens to be based on the, a, a, a character who appears and by the way is kind of the connection. You know, it's more like she jumped from one song into another song. But energetically, it's, they're just so different. And, and it wasn't something that, that I really set out to do. It just kind of, it accidentally happened. And somewhere along the way, I, I realized that that's the same girl jumped from one song to another.
Hopefully you'll have to forgive me. I threw up a little bit in the second chorus. Yeah, a little bit. Oh no, in the bridge, I'm sorry. A little, a little vomit came up during the bridge there. Just did you, did you rinse your throat? Too soon before you play. No. Did you rinse your throat? It's really bad for your teeth. If ever you throw up, be sure and, and gargle with water afterwards because the acid, acid and the vomit will damage your teeth. Hooray! You know, there's always a, a healthy competitiveness between us because uh, we're all, you know, wanting to give and wanting to, you know, to show the other guys, look, I did something great, you know, do you like it? And we want everyone to like it. And, and so it's always, uh, we're always, you know, when you're with the four guys and everyone's putting out their thing, you can't just human nature to have an air of competitiveness. But really, more than anything, it's, it's just uh, giving, wanting to give something good that the other three guys like and wanting to support the visions that the other ones put forward. If there's any competition, for, for, from my perspective, it, it, it's, it's almost like you're just playing a little game for a second. Like, it's not, it's not serious competition. It's more about four people becoming one, you know? It's more about four people uniting to, to create one thing together and, to, and to, to work as one force together, you know? Like in Chad and my case, like we'll look at like Pete Townsend and Keith Moon, like where there actually is a competitive mm -hmm. thing going on and we're inspired by that energy. So we might bring that energy to rehearsal while we're jamming or something, but we're not, we don't actually have it in our hearts Much to, to be like John. angry he at each other the way those guys were, you know? <laughs> <laughs> one shot, one like me. having the opportunity to live a creative existence I just feel really lucky being a person who's born you know with with this as being what was in store for me is to is to is to pretty much just make my life uh, a constant creativity and when it's not creative it's it's doing the things that a person does to make themselves the best they can be to be creative you know um, you know I'm, I've been pretty good with taking care of myself in the last seven years you know since I rejoined the band and I, feel, I just feel really lucky. I also, it, it has partly to do with the fact that I had that, that outside perspective of totally disappearing from um, the human race, sort of, in, in a lot of ways. I, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I had no, I, 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 didn't, I didn't have fame to cling to anymore. I didn't have, like, money to cling to anymore. I didn't have, like, friends who supported me to, to cling to. And I, I, have, I see these things differently now than I saw them then. I see them all for, as a chance for freedom, you know, um, I, I, from me as an individual, you know, that, that I, I didn't appreciate or take, take full advantage of the first time around. So, so, you know, for me, like at a time like a couple of years ago when I had six months off, 
it was just like, I'm just going to record as much music as I can, you know. Also because when we're on tour, I just don't, I, I write a lot of music, but I don't have a chance to record it all, you know. So, so uh, that, was, that was, you know, right now I'm looking for a little window where I can make a, another album that I have, I have the music planned for. And, and I just, uh, but, but we're, I've been working so hard promoting the Chili Peppers that there's been no time lately, but, but I'm going to fit it, squeeze it in there, you know. Touch me in the pouring rain And the moment that you wander far from me I want to feel you in my arms again And you come to me on a supper breeze Give me warm in your arms, then you softly And it's me you need to show I got you. 
Feeling a lot of love coming from this little area right there. To me, I remember, you know, when I was a kid, the, when I was in junior high, and, and I first really sort of became kind of conscious about popular culture and music. And to me, and I'm not sure if they were the biggest or not, but to me, the biggest band in the world was Earth, Wind, and Fire. And I always, like, to this day, I always really admire them as I remember that everybody liked them, you know. Like at school, it was always like, you know, there were the kids that like Kiss, and there were the kids that like P Funk, and that was real separate. But like, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I, P Funk, P Funk, P Funk. But, but, um, but everybody liked Earth, Wind, and like, Fire. Kiss, kiss, kiss. P Funk, P Funk, P Funk. Yeah, yeah. But, but everybody liked Earth, Wind, and Fire, and not just black and white people, young people, old people. Chinese? The, the Mexican community in Los Angeles. Chinese hated them. No, no, Chinese loved Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, it was the Koreans. <laughs> the, the Chinese guy turned me on to Earth, Wind, and Fire. I must have been a Taiwanese, I'm thinking of. <laughs> but, but, but anyways, to me, that was always something for reach, to reach for. And, and, you know, as a lot of you, when I was a kid, I was a trumpet player. I liked they had horns and a jazz influence and stuff. But, but I, I still think of them all the time. As, and, and it's like... Music is this big picture, you know, and um, our music is really for everybody, you know, and, and we're influenced by everything and we love everything, all kinds of music. There's every category of music has something beautiful in it that, that we love and that affects us profoundly. And that's, the, the, you know. There, there were such black acts like Olivia Newton-John that really spoke to us growing up. And no, I'm kidding, of course, but I do want, I do want to give a, a shout out to our record label as not bothering us at all when it comes to like with the music that we make, they do not hassle us. They do not, you know, suggest things to us. They're not like, oh, well, that's great, but that's not... They, they really give us complete freedom, and, and we're pretty lucky to be in that position, too. Something 
one thing that seems to have changed is, is that as we've changed and remained teachable and enthusiastic and kind of, you know, into inventing and experimenting with new stuff and new experiences, I think so too has Rick Rubin, you know, as a producer. He hasn't just like relied on what he did that was successful 10 years ago or whatever. He's like a kid, you know, music still makes him happier than anything else in the world. And I, I think he's been willing to, you know, evolve and to remain enthusiastic about music in the same way that we have. So it's not like we kept growing. He stayed the same. He kind of, you know, matched our, um, our excitement. And that's, that's kind of cool for a guy who's been doing it as long as he has to still treat it like it means everything in the world. I think, our, you know, our personal relationships with him always have, you know, shifted and changed throughout the years. But our, our working relationship with him, I, I think... I don't know if you guys all agree with me. I think it's pretty much the same, you know. I mean, we do our thing. We write the music. We write the songs. We, we, we put it all together. Then we get together with him, and he gives us a really, you know, a, we trust his objective opinion on what we're doing, and, it, and it's very helpful to have that, that uh, you know, calm, objective opinion because we're not always calm and objective people, and, you know, we're, it's not like there's one leader in our band or anything. We're all kind of, you know, putting out ideas and stuff, and it's helpful to have that objective opinion that we trust. showing up to the show. You guys are a great audience, thank you. I don't think any of us really go into the creative elements of, of writing music and songs and hanging out as a band thinking about what kind of numbers of records we've sold. I mean, we're grateful and we're pleased and we love reaching lots of people and it's exciting to sell records, but when we go and we get into a small rehearsal studio and we start jamming and writing, it's really, honestly, it's the last thing on anybody's mind. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a blessing. We're sort of free of that kind of interference when we're writing. There is a certain energy that's inside the um 
when you're in a band who's been going for this long and there's a certain amount of love coming coming from people like I don't discount that 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 figures largely into the music we make but we're not conscious of it but I feel that it is a transference that happens where the love that people send out works its way into the music you know I, I'm I feel pretty sure of that you know but it's not has nothing to do with how many are going to buy the records because that's a future thing She was swinging a hammer, right to 